All right, I thought a good feature we can add at this point is controller support. Unity has support for pretty much any kind of input device you can think of, but the most common input device is the common game controller. Now here I have an ordinary wireless Xbox 360 gamepad that most of you probably have already, but you can do this lesson with just about any controller that your computer recognizes. So the way that controllers work is they first interface with your operating system, which then identifies the controller as a device. And meanwhile, Unity has a built-in input manager that pulls information from this device service, and you can then map the buttons in this input manager in order to reference them in code. So the first thing to do is take a look at the Windows controller interface. So in the search bar, type in game controllers. You'll get to a screen that looks like this that identifies your controller. And in the properties, you can find which button number corresponds to the actual button on the controller. So you could just press the buttons and figure it out. But actually the buttons themselves might be numbered differently in Unity than what you see in the Windows device service. If you're using an Xbox 360 controller, you'll find the number mappings at this website uh, that's nice and handy and available to get the button mappings as they are in Unity for the input manager. And I'll be using these mappings for this lesson. Okay, so our game here pretty much uses two buttons plus the directional inputs. So I'll want to use the A and B buttons on the controller for the uh, teleport and power-up controls. And well, well, we'll deal with the directional inputs separately. And at the end also, we'll add a start button for the game manager as well. So first go over to Unity and go to Edit, Project Settings, input, and this will bring up the input manager. So here buttons are called axes, and you'll see a default setup that's already kind of half configured. So let's erase this default setup by setting the axes to zero and press enter. Now first let's set up the directional axes for horizontal and vertical direction inputs. So we want two axes, one for horizontal and one for vertical. So here where it says element zero, we'll give it a name, horizontal, and input these settings, which we'll briefly touch on in a moment. And here for the type, just say joystick axis, and it'll be on the X axis for horizontal, of course and get motion from all joysticks should also be selected. And then for this, we'll do it very similarly. We'll say vertical for the name and same settings here, 0.8, two, this will be the Y axis and joystick axis yet again. All right, so the only parameter that we're really interested in here is the dead parameter, which represents the dead zone for this axis. And 0.8 dead represents uh, if the analog stick is going 80% of the way to its maximum on the horizontal axis, it just won't register. You have to push the stick 80% of the way or higher for it to register. And so we're doing that only so that the game is not too touchy, right? Uh, with the analog stick. And actually, this kind of game that we're coding here probably is not best suited to be played with the analog stick. You're probably better off using the D-pad because it's just an eight-way directional game anyways. You're either moving in one direction 100% or 0%, right? There's no in-betweens. All right, so now let's reference this directional input and in code to wire it all up and get it working. So go to Cube Controller. And here in our movement method, let's add reference to this uh, directional input. So if we're hitting the left arrow or we use input.getAxis or if the horizontal axis returns true, not only returns true, but is less than zero because minus
then execute the movement for the left movement. And here for the right, it'll be the same, except for the right, it'll be greater than zero. And for the up arrow, it will be the get axis will refer to the vertical axis. And flip this as well. All right, so let's just run this and uh, here I'll mute the audio so it doesn't get in our way and I can talk and I'll use my game pad this time to control movement. All right, so yeah, the analog joystick, it's working. It still feels a little less than optimal because again, I think this is best suited for a digital uh, input from, from the D-pad. We'll worry about that in a second, but all right, so that's working. Now, going back to the input manager, you may have noticed this uh, negative button, positive button, and so on. Uh, well, for, for button inputs, this is mainly for uh, determining the control values if you're using a, an ordinary button. So, for example, for keyboard input, we often use the WASD controls. So A and D would be used for the horizontal axis. And in this case, the positive button would be A and D would be the negative button, right? So that's what that's all about. Uh, we're not gonna make use of keyboard input. We're just gonna stick to controller input for now, but I wanted to quickly touch on that. All right, so apparently if you have a wired gamepad, your directional inputs are mapped the same as your analog stick. But apparently for whatever reason, for the wireless controllers, the D-pad inputs are mapped to completely different axes. And this is all detailed at that site I mentioned earlier. So to map the D-pad for a wireless controller, add this in the input manager. Let's add another two axes, make this four, press enter. And for this one, we'll say D-pad horizontal. And we don't need a dead zone because it's digital. The D-pad, it returns either, you know, minus one, zero, or one. It doesn't return a, a float or an in-between value. And leave that as it is. And we'll say, we'll keep it as joystick axis here. And for this, we'll have to reference the sixth axis. That's the horizontal D-pad axis. And that should work fine for that. And here we'll say D-pad vertical. And this will be the seventh axis. Again, this is all detailed at that website. Uh, you should reference that if you have an Xbox controller. Now going back to the controller movement inputs here, we'll reference that axis. So either use the left arrow or the analog stick or input here. I'll get this out of the way just so we have more real estate here. Get axis and this will be D-pad horizontal. See, unfortunately, this is a string that I'm passing in. So you have to type it exactly as the name is in the input manager, or else it just won't work. This would be greater than. This will be D-pad vertical. So that, and that will be greater than. All right, I'll just quickly test this to make sure that it's coded properly. So using the D-pad now for, for movement. Yeah, and I think it feels a lot better than the uh, analog stick. All right, awesome. All right, now to configure the uh, teleport and power-up buttons, 
back to the input manager. So type in six and press enter. And for this, we'll call it teleport. And again, referring to that website with the button mappings for Unity, we'll set the positive button to joystick button zero. It's a key or mouse button. And just set that to the X axis, doesn't matter. And that should be good for that. And then for power up, call it power up. And this will be positive button, joystick button one. And again, key or mouse button and just put this on the X axis, doesn't matter. All right, now for the teleport, we just go to the cube controller. In the teleport method and put an or for input dot get get button down instead of get key down. And it's called teleport. Right, and for the power up, we go to the power up spawn or the uh, the power up manager, and here we'll say either key code Z or input dot get button down power up, and then we'll wrap this or conditional check, I'll wrap this conditional check in parentheses. So it checks that together, it's either or. And the same thing here for the else if. All right, so let's quickly test that out, the teleport and power up. All right, so the A button should be for teleporting. Yep, that works. And then for the power up, the B button. Great. All right, so finally we should also implement the start button to perform the same function as the enter key. So in the input manager, let's make that axis. So seven, and here we'll call it start and it'll be button seven. And now in the manager, uh, game start manager, just put in that check or input dot get button down start. And so I'll so I'll load the start scene in order to test this. All right, so hitting the start button, there we go. Works. Also at game over or when we need to reset the scene, it works as well. Great.